Hey you guys, welcome back. So the other day ESOL did some updates to their software, which allows uh, ESOL Pro users to set up multiple machines. However, it does kind of change the layout of some of the settings for those users who aren't actually connecting their machines or uh, aren't using an XCARV uh, or for, for whatever reason, they need to change their work area. It's in a different place kind of now. So if you haven't set up a machine before, Normally, you would click this machine button and you'd have a pop up where you could change your work area. That's no longer an option directly. Now, you can go into this general settings here and still that's the advanced button that it was before. It used to be machine advanced, now it's machine general settings. And you still get these same options for safety height, uh, step over, setting your spindle to automatic, and generating and saving your G code, as well as machine inspector. Everything you had before in the advanced tab. So now, in order to change your work area, we'd have to go ahead and set up a new machine. Now, we're not actually going to connect your CNC to Easel unless you want to, but if you ever do that and you're running a third-party CNC, do not select an Inventables one. It will send Gerbil settings to your machine, and they probably aren't right. And if you're running an XCARV with the new Z upgrade, uh, you're also going to want to verify your Gerbil settings as well because they will set them for a stock X car. And if you have the upgrades, your uh, 102 setting will change and it will likely result in your X car crashing on the first car. So if you are running that one, you can follow this option as well because it's not gonna change your settings if you select third-party machines. So you can go through the third-party machine setup. You can select one of these if you want, if one applies to you, or you can simply select other. It's all referential anyway. It doesn't affect anything that's gonna happen in the carve setting or any anywhere within easel. So the next step is to set up our work area. So for this, I'm gonna set it up as if it's a 3018. So 300 by 180 is my work area here. And you can select whether you've got a dust shoe or not. And if we do go through this profile of setting this up, we can also set it up for a probe and adjust the Z probe thickness in here. And that's where you do that as well. So for right now, I'm setting this up as if I have a 3018 and I don't actually want to connect my machine. You just enter your dimensions here and select confirm settings and it's going to want to connect to your machine, but you don't need to. You do however need to go through this setting of, of setting this up right here, selecting other other and typing your work area and pressing confirm setting for this machine to be saved into easel. So now we can go back into our new project. And now we have cut parameters here. Our machine work area is set up as a 300 by 180 because that's what I put in that um, as my work area in that last screen there. So with that set up, we can go up here to machine and now we've got this machine up here. Now, if you had pro, you could also set up another one and then you have multiple ones right here as a dropdown. Now, one of the reasons you might want that is if you have multiple machines that run off of different parameters, different cut settings for different bits, or different cut settings for the same bit. And you can go in the toolbox and you can set up those cut settings for each of your CNCs separately. And then it would utilize the different cut parameters based on which one you select in this dropdown. But for now, I'm just going to show you how we would change the work area for this 3018. Because I set it up as a 3018, but we all know that it, it can't actually reach the full outsides of either of these dimensions. So now I realize I need to, I set it up wrong and I need to adjust my work area. Normally in the past, you would just click machine and there's a pop-up here that says work area. Well, now I've got to select edit your machine. And in here, I can not only uh, change the work area, but I can also type in a custom name. So I'm going to type in 3018 desktop number one and I can ad adjust the work area. Now, I was playing with this earlier and I noticed that there are some caveats to adjusting the work area right now. Uh, I went ahead and reported those to ESOL before recording this video, but if you do edit these numbers and metric, it's currently taking them any numbers entered in here as if it's imperial inches and converting it to metric for you. So watch, 300, I wanna change it to 290 and I press 290. If I want to click save or in this case, click somewhere else, it converted that 290 as if the 290 was inches. So I'm gonna go over here and show you the quick little workaround I found. 290 is what we wanna enter. I'm gonna divide that by 25.4, the conversion from 
in millimeters down to over to inches. So now I have 11.417. So I'm going to type in here 11.417. And now I've got 290 millimeters. And for this one, I want the Y to be 175 divided by 25.4. And I've got 6.889. 6.889, and now I've got 290 by 175. Now over here as well, we have the spindle options and you can choose which one you have. If you do choose any of these, it's going to, uh, it actually doesn't make a difference which one you choose, right? It's all for your reference. So I'm gonna choose other, and we have the option of spindle control by, but it's not selectable. This is still over in the advanced tab, just like it was before, but it has a new name now. And then the accessories you can choose here as well. And this will just change what it prompts you to turn on or install when you do the built-in car feature. But since we're not doing that here, we don't have to worry about these. If you did select Z-Probe, you would need to go through that machine setup and put in the correct dimensions for the Z-Probe, or it's going to use the nominal dimensions for the Z-Probe that Inventable sells. So you're gonna wanna go in there and adjust that to precisely what your thickness is. If you are using the built-in car setting, and you do use the Z Pro. This is also where you can uninstall the machine too if you ever want to get rid of one of your machines. Uh, that's how you would do it. There is a caveat to uninstalling it, and that is it will unassign all of the bits that you had assigned to that machine. It won't know what machine to assign those parameters to. So in that toolbox, it will have all your bits and it will just say unassigned for the setting for those bits that were previously assigned to that machine. So I'm just going to click save in here and we can go back over here and previously we went machine advanced to export our g-code and we'll just go general settings and again this is where you would change it from manual to automatic and type in your rpm as it correlates to your gerbil settings for the rpm of course so on this one i'm setting up a 3018 the standard one that has the 10,000 rpm spindle so i would type in the default rpm that i want to run at so whether that be 10,000 or 9,000 is another one that is a common running one as well. Um, so that this is where you would generate the G-code. Uh, actually, it helps to have a design element in here, doesn't it? So this is where you would generate the G-code and then export it so that you could send it via a third-party G-code sender like Candle, QGS, or Open Builds. So if you haven't seen them yet, I'm going to do a video on Open Builds, and we'll link that up here in the corner. Until next time, guys, thank you. Have a great day.